One of the things that I've learned throughout the years is sometimes you have to get knocked down lower than you've ever been to stand up taller than you ever were. My name is Jonathan Gonzalez. I am a local youth pastor in our community. I'm also the facilities manager and leadership coordinator at the Ocean City Tabernacle. But who I am now is not who I always was. I was born here in New Jersey, but I was raised in Columbia. Uh, and my family came back down here uh, right before I hit second grade. Uh, so we moved into the city, Atlantic City, uh, no English. And I'll never forget waiting until it got dark, stepping outside and, and going into our backyard where I would see these seagulls just lit up from the light that radiated from the Ultram Plaza. My parents got divorced when I was really young. I would never want to say it, it was their fault, but that divorce definitely had an impact on a 12-year-old boy who was trying to figure out what it meant to be a young man and, and what life meant. At a very early stage in my life, I began to steal I uh, got arrested at a really, really early, early age, uh, more than once for stealing, and I just didn't care. Entering into high school was when I began to use drugs, and not only doing drugs, but I'm now also selling drugs to maintain my habit. There was no sensitivity to the feelings of others or to the destruction that I was having on my community at all, you know. Um, and the reality is that's what happens, you know. The, the more and more you sin, the more wrong you do in the world, uh, the harder your heart gets, um, and the deeper you end up in an addiction, um, and especially in the streets, you become extremely cold. I really thought that my, my goal, I was gonna either end up dead or in jail, right? Because that's just what, what happened to, uh, to young men uh, that was living the lifestyle that I was living. And if I ended up dying uh, or killing, and ending, ending up in jail or in the ground, I was okay with that. I'm seeing my mom just stressed out, right? I, I'm seeing my mother uh, waiting up for me at nights, you know, long, long hours, and sometimes I wouldn't even come home or check in. Um, and so I began to see that heaviness on her, and so I said, you know what, I'm doing really bad. Let, let me change this up a little bit. I think I can stop, I think I can, I can pump the brakes. And, and on this one night, I just said, you know what, I'm going home tonight. I'm gonna go home early, and I'm just gonna go to sleep early, and I'm gonna go to school. Um, I get picked up by two friends. I jump into the back seat of this vehicle, right in the middle, and I, I laid my left leg underneath the driver's side seat. Um, and we, we pull off, we're driving. I picked up a phone call, and I'm looking down. And as we're driving, we're coming to the bend, and I hear a scream. I look up, and all I see is lights. It happened really, really fast. I opened my eyes, and I remember just feeling something really, really bad just happened. At that moment, I knew it was a car accident. Uh, my face ended up actually indented in the windshield. Uh, and if it wasn't for my left leg, which was tucked underneath the seat, I probably would have went right through the windshield. So my left leg got snagged from the hit. Um, and a lot of it was tore off. So from the impact, my, my spleen ruptured also, so I was internally bleeding, uh, and I broke over 10 bones in my face. The cell phone that I had up against my ear, the cell phone that I was using that night, ends up exploding on my mouth, uh, and I almost lost my eye. Broke my jaw in three different places, all in a blink of an eye. And that, this is where it happened. This is where that undeniable moment happened in my life. At the age of 17, as a young boy was bleeding out, uh, I cried out to God. I prayed. I prayed for the very first time. So I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I've done, who I've been. But if you give me one more chance to live, I will come back and serve you. In the midst of my tragedy, in the midst of me bleeding out and dying, I remember just feeling this peace and love, this comfort, in the midst of all this craziness that was going on around me. I was in a coma for two weeks. The doctors got to the point where they told my mom, hey, listen, your son's on life support. Uh, the likelihood of him waking up in a very bad state is high. We would like to disconnect to use possibly his heart or any, any other work and organs somewhere else. Um, but my mother said no. And if it wasn't for her step of faith and her willingness to say, no, you're not touching 
that chord, um, I, I most likely would not be here right now telling you this story. I woke up in a semi-vegetable state. I couldn't speak. I had tubes in my mouth. I had tubes in my stomach. Uh, my stomach was freshly put back together. Uh, my left leg was freshly put back together. And uh, I didn't wake up saying, yes, I'm ready. I survived. I'm, I'm ready to serve you. I didn't wake up saying, God, you answered my prayer. You heard me that night as I cried out to you as I was bleeding to death. I woke up angry, confused, suicidal the first week. I didn't want to live. I was in a lot, a lot of pain. Um, I was given a lot, a lot of Percocets, a lot, a lot of opiates uh, to maintain or control my pain uh, until the doctors actually said, whoa, uh, Jonathan, you're addicted and we're not going to fill any more prescriptions to you. Uh, my mentality uh, back then was, well, if, if you're not going to give it to me, that's fine. I, I, I'll go find a way to get high. I'll go find a way to, to bury my pain. I'll go find a way to mask some of the pain and some of the anguish that I was going through inside as a young man. Remember, I was only 17 years old. And so instead of aligning myself with what God has for me, what God has for us, I actually went right back into the streets, full force. And I said, if a car accident didn't stop me, you know, what man, what gang, who, what is gonna stop me now? But here's a beautiful thing that, that I find and that I have found is that uh, like he who begins a, an amazing and a beautiful work in you is faithful to complete it. I, I literally felt like, like God took me right back into that car accident. And I remember feeling like, hey, listen, like I, 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 I answered you. Like you asked me for life. You asked me for another chance to live. And that I gave you, I gave you another chance. But the reason why you're feeling the way you're feeling is because you didn't answer or you didn't respond to your end of the promise. You said you would come back and serve me. And I was not serving him. I was far, I was far, far from him. I didn't even know who I was supposed to serve. I had no idea. Uh, and so this missionary comes to my home uh, to pray for my mother. And she ends up leaving a book. And it just says, A Purpose Driven Life. And it was written in Spanish. And so I'm like, hey, mom, are, are you reading this? Like, what are you doing with this book? She was like, no, nah, take it. So I grabbed it. Each day, I felt like it brought me closer and closer and closer to that which I was seeking, that, that, that wanting of realigning myself or finding out who was God and, and who answered my prayer that night. I remember being invited to uh, a, a church in, in my local community. I remember sitting down and, and just kind of trying to scope the place out and feel what, what this whole church thing was about. I remember Pastor Steve getting up uh, to preach and to share, and I've never heard someone share God's word uh, the way he did. I leave, I go home, and he calls me. Hey, thank you for, for connecting, thank you for visiting. Um, and just right then and there, I burst inside. I'm like, hey, I, I need to talk to you. So I had the opportunity to sit down with, with Pastor Steve, and, and he heard my story, and, and he heard what I went through, and ever since that, the journey has been pretty incredible. So today, I'm a husband, uh, today I'm a father uh, of two beautiful, beautiful kids. Uh, today I am a pastor of youth. You know, uh, I'm involved with an amazing organization called the Ocean City Tabernacle where I've grown and, and learned so much that has really fed into who God has created me to be. Um, I'm also a, a public speaker. I'm passionate about going to schools. Uh, I really, really believe that everything that I've been through, the worst of the worst, um, has really shaped me and prepared me for what I'm doing today uh, and what I will be doing until I take my last breath. So, you know, I am not what I have done. I am what I have overcome. I am more than my scars.